Over on NBA.com, our crew has been collecting the data from several different mock drafts, and the consensus of all of the different outlets has Doncic going third to the Hawks. That's right behind DeAndre Ayton and Marvin Bagley the third. So, Smitty has uh, come back in studio here, and, and you've been looking at the tape of Doncic. There's mm -hmm. a lot unknown. He's been playing in the second best league in the world and thriving. What have you picked up on the tape that you think NBA fans should know about? Well, we'll get a chance to see what he can do to positives. And always we're going to break down the strengths and the weaknesses. I got a chance to see him when he was 16 playing against the Celtics over in Spain. You just marvel at his size and his ability. 6'8", 220, patience off the pick and roll, great vision. You can see influence in the defender to go out and makes a nice pass to his big Walter Tavares down there to get a nice bucket. Handling the point guard situation comes off screens. I love he's always square, but this is where him being able to get some separation. That's the one area everybody's worried about on this play was nice. And then a jump shot off the dribble. He's taking a lot of contested shots. Next, pump fake. Great fundamentals, great footwork, and the size to go down there and finish. So when you start talking about the positives, he has great vision, has a nice shot. He's a winner. He's played in big time games. And he's, as you look, he has an unbelievable resume. Next step is the weaknesses are lateral speed, foot quickness, and athleticism. Everybody's saying he's a point guard. I think he has point guard skills and vision and all that. I don't know if you want to be sliding your feet. Lack of lateral speed on all the type of pick and rolls. I think he'll be a great small forward because he's strong enough to be able to rebound. You can see the toughness from he can shoot the basketball, and you have another ball handler. Say you have a dominant point guard. You have a guy that small forward position that can make plays like your point guard. I think that'll be a the true position for Luka Doncic. Slovenian sensation. And Doncic is on fire from three. We've never seen a prospect at his age accomplish what he has. It's an amazing city, you know. It's always sunny and good weather and nice people, nice places. So it's very nice to be here. I play a lot of video games with my friends, uh, some coffee, you know, sometimes we go to cinema, play bowling. It was tough, you know, because when I was younger, I only eat uh, pasta and hamburgers. <laughs> so I didn't like any food. But now, now I'm okay. Come on. It's amazing, yeah. Now I'm okay. I just like Tiger. <laughs> so maybe if we go to the United States, I will buy it. <laughs> like Mike Dyson. I'm a kid, I just want to play basketball, you know, so I'm not tired. This year I became European champion with Slovenia. I became European champion with Real Madrid. I was MVP of the season and MVP of the Final Four, so it's like a dream country. Real Madrid has taken the trophy to become the new EuroLeague champions. Luka Doncic is the MVP, the youngest ever. It was an amazing feeling, you know. I was without words. Uh, we have a rough season uh, with all the injuries, but we played like a team and we did it. Uh, I think not much people believed in us in the finals, so I think it's more special because of that. He was always playing with the ball, but I was never thinking so much about this because for me it was only important that he's happy. To move to Madrid to everything new, so it was hard. I know a lot of people told me, you're too young to go, so, but I didn't want to listen to them, I want to listen to me. First I said, oh my God, this is too early because he was 13 years old, he was really a kid. Um, and then he said to me, mom, I want to try. And my mom is very important, you know, to be here with me. Everything new, you need to have a person to stay with you, to help you. If you go away from home with 13 years old, you become very mature. So this helped him to develop in basketball too, of course. Doncic, 6'6", 195, just 16 years old. We played uh, first of all against Boston Celtics, then next year we played against OKC here in Madrid. I was 16 years old playing against some of the best players in the world versus Westbrook, so I was, you know, a little bit scared. <laughs> it was just amazing to be on the court with them. Doncic, youngest ever to play for Real Madrid. The NBA is the best league in the world, you know. You have amazing players, amazing coaches. It's just another world, you know. Of course, it's exciting to play against these players or with them. It will be amazing. 
My favorite is LeBron, the way he rebounds, passes, scores. He can play a lot of positions. I can play a lot of positions, but to be like LeBron, I'll need to work much harder. You can improve everything, uh, every time, every day you can improve, but especially my physical condition and my shot. Don't it's up top. Oh my lord, are you kidding me? I mean, I know there is pressure, you know, but I think I, I show that when I go on the court, I don't have any pressure. I always say when I get on the court, I forget about everything, just play basketball. I'm really, really happy and proud of him, especially because he's a great person and also a great basketball player. What I remember the most is how happy you were whenever you came from school. One practice was never enough for you, so you wanted to practice with uh, your group, older group, and maybe some other more. <laughs> what are you the most excited for the summer? I mean, I'm excited to, to see the United States, to train there. That means how you love the basketball. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the most thing I will miss is the whole Real Madrid, you know, the people they have, they're just amazing, you know, they gave, they gave me everything uh, when I was 13, they took care of me, uh, they treat me like a family here, so I will miss them a lot. Everything is new, it's exciting and I'm very happy to be in this position. The youngster smells it out, oh, 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 no he didn't, my lord, look at Luca. <laughs> June 26, 1991, Doug Smith with the Steve fifth pick Smith. of the NBA draft, the Miami Heat selected Steve Smith. Smitty, good sharp there, huh? Not bad, uh, chewing that gum. I was nervous, chewing it hard, boy. So, such a unique night. What's it like out there sitting at the garden not knowing where you'd be picked? The one good thing is I was at the guard. That, that helped me a little bit. Yeah. Not knowing, you're totally right, not knowing where I was going to go from two through six, seeing which teammates, seeing which city. Uh, good thing I had a lot of friends. It's, it's nerve-wracking, but on the same time, it's a dream come true. You got all smiles. Well, 54 players were selected that night in the 1991 mm -hmm. NBA draft. No one, no one scored more total points in the NBA than the fifth pick. Steve Smith. Mm, I didn't know that at all. So you got some credibility. Well, Larry Johnson would have, but I guess I got a couple more got him years. Beat, yeah. Uh, you played 14 seasons. You won a title with the Spurs. You were an all-star with the Hawks. Um, so looking back, what advice, if you could go back to 91, what advice would Smitty today, the Wiley veteran, <laughs> tell that young guy there about what's ahead and what he needs to be ready for in the NBA? You're right, Jared. I, I love to just to break down. Start off first. My number one topic will be communication with teammates. And the reason why is get a chance to talk to the teammates, talk to the coaching staff to get a head start. I had, uh, I would say a cheat sheet. Glenn Rice is from University of Michigan. Grant Long's from Eastern Michigan. Willie Bird, even though he went to Minnesota, we grew up two blocks from each other. So I had three guys that I was already familiar with. So that would be number one. You have social media, get to talk to those guys, get a chance just to pick their brains and to talk to them about the NBA way, being a pro. Second for me is, your living arrangements. A lot of guys wait to the last minute, Jared. You got to find your living arrangement, where they are, close to practice, close to arena, where you want to lay up. Don't wait to that last week before training camp and you're scrambling. Try to get that done as soon as possible. I got a chance to go down there, and boy, it was hard for me, Right, Jared. which part of the beach do I want to live on? I went on? to South Beach, yeah. I went to Cuba's Bay, <laughs> I went to Bell Harbor. I was just all over the place, and finally, guys like Smitty. Live close to practice. Oh. And I, I didn't listen. I went to no. keep his game because no. I wanted to be in it. But I think that's another thing. Get those living arrangements right. done quickly. Third, Jared, you got to come up with your routine. Your, your, your workout routine before games every day, your workout routine for shoot around, your workout routine in the summer. Start to work on that. Yes, right now for next summer, who you're working out with, where you're working out at, who you want to be around. And that's going to be huge. And then you got to start talking to older guys about what do you do on game days. A lot of guys are lost. You see guys, rookies roaming the mall, <laughs> roaming around and not understanding how to get ready for NBA basketball through the season on game days and off season. So that's huge. Third, fourth now is that we all still got to do tip-top shape. And I'm just not talking about 
physically, mm-hmm. mentally as well. You got to find a way to get your rest. You got to get in tip top shape. No matter how good a shape you're in, Jared, the strength and the pace in the 82 games, it caught up with me. That that rookie wall is real, Jared. I hit it. Oh. Real yeah, hard in January. Southeast flu, huh? Like, uh, no, it's right. just a rookie wall. It might, uh, might have had some sunshine to do with it uh, down yeah. there in Miami. Uh, that's one. But mentally and physically, you got to get in tip-top shape. No matter what, you might think you're in shape. It's totally hard. Games are hard in college, but practices are hard in the NBA. Yeah. You're going up against the best of best every day. Last one, most important to me, financially. Financially become rock solid. You want to know where your money is because that's stressful. Yeah. When you start to look at that bank account, it's saying zero. You don't know where it's going from here and there. Find out everything about your financial. Talk to those guys. Stay on a budget. Do not go over that budget. I know a lot of friends like Jared's going to be hanging around asking for money. You got to stay strictly on that budget. Stay to have that red line and don't go over it.